There are headlines popping up all over the place claiming that supplementing with nicotinamide riboside, which is a form of vitamin B3, increases cancer rates. The drama stems from this paper here which concluded that NR supplementation results in a significant increase in cancer prevalence and metastases of triple negative breast cancer to the brain. This is a big deal in the longevity space because many people use vitamin B3 supplements such as NR or NMN to support their NAD levels and NAD is a molecule that's central to our metabolism. And personally I use 50 milligrams of niacin which is also a form of vitamin B3 for the same reason. So the last thing that we want to do is take a supplement that will increase cancer rates. But to cut to the chase this whole saga is a classic example of people reading an abstract of a paper panicking and then extrapolating all sorts of nonsense. So instead let's dive into the details of this paper and make sure to subscribe. The authors manufactured highly aggressive breast cancer cells and then directly injected them into 19 separate mice. That in itself is a massive red flag. Normal mice and humans don't just have highly aggressive breast cancer cells injected directly into them. Instead, cancer develops by a series of mutations in the cells that cause uncontrolled growth. In humans, we've got a fantastic study that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and it was looking at nicotinamide, which is also another form of vitamin B3, to see if it could be protective against skin cancer. This was a double-blind, randomized controlled trial, where half of the participants took 500 milligrams of nicotinamide twice a day and the other half took placebo and the study ran for 12 months. At the 12 month mark they could see that the rate of new non-melanoma skin cancers was lower by a whopping 23% in the nicotinamide group compared to the placebo and this was statistically significant. This led to the conclusion that oral nicotinamide is safe and effective in reducing the rates of new non-melanoma skin cancers in high-risk patients. Therefore it's plausible that by supplementing with vitamin B3, we are supporting our NAD levels, leading to less DNA damage and less cancer rates. But the new paper that's caused all of this drama completely bypasses that probable protective effect. Plus, the study only used 19 mice, so by week 10, 7 out of the 10 mice in the nicotinamide riboside group, they had detectable tumours, so 70% of them, while only 5 out of the 9 mice in the control group, so 55%, had tumours, resulting in a 27% increased tumour prevalence. Now that sounds like a lot, but this does not reach statistical significance because again, they're using so few mice in the study. And in the second part of the study, the highly aggressive breast cancer cells, they were injected directly into the hearts of the mice and it was this experiment that they could see an increase in brain metastases in the nicotinamide riboside group. Once again though, normal mice and humans don't have breast cancer cells directly injected into their hearts. We cannot extrapolate this to normal humans and and normal mice. To cap things off, one of the authors of the study had a pretty damning statement. He said that the title of the news article, Popular Dietary Supplement Causes Cancer Risk and Brain Metastases, is clickbait material and totally inaccurate from a scientific standpoint. The experiment does not allow for this conclusion. Besides, if we wanted to see what happens when nicotinamide riboside is given to mice for their lifetime, we've got fantastic research from the Interventions Testing Program. And while that paper didn't show an improvement with nicotinamide riboside supplements, it certainly didn't show an increase in cancer rates. Overall, there is no evidence that vitamin B3 supplements, including NR, NMN, nicotinamide, or niacin, cause cancer. It's probably the opposite, where they're likely protective, and we've got evidence of this protective effect in humans. Instead, what is an open question is what happens when vitamin B3 is given to people that already have diagnosed cancer. In those cases, will vitamin B3 help fuel that existing cancer growth? Don't know. And if I had diagnosed cancer, I would not supplement with vitamin B3. That's a massive difference. This whole saga is a fantastic learning point, not just to read the abstracts of a paper. We need to dive into the methods. If you do want to understand the latest research on actionable ways to prevent cancer, make sure to check out the next video here. A massive thank you to donotage.org for their $10,000 donation to my rapamycin study. They are a health research organization, and to benefit from the ingredients as well as a 10% discount code, check out the pinned comment.